Hello and welcome back to Game of Thrones mod for Crusader Kings 2. So we are a Republic and we'll talk about that in a second. However, we have some custom courtiers. So let's talk about Melissa. Melissa was a salt wife but has broken free of her chains and is now, uh, well she's now living in Harlow Hill but not much else is known about her. She's, you know, understandably reluctant to talk about her time outside of, uh, like, outside of Harlow. And talking of time, we have Orion Time, who is very, is almost obsessed with Aegon. He's very into being like him. And he also, um, his family was killed by slavers, and he left with the Valyrian sword. And when he found that he had no home to go back to, he thought, I could be more like Aegon. I'm going to go to Westeros, I'm going to put my sword to good use, and I'm going to make my family's name great again. And we have Duncan Snowfall, who is married to Morgan Santagar. So, Duncan Snowfall was, uh, he was a smart wildling. He was bright, uh, but he was, he was uh, very afraid and fearful, which isn't the best thing to be for a wildling. And one day when he was out hunting with his father, um, his father died. He was gored by a bull. And unfortunately, uh, his uh, clansmen, who already didn't like him, have ex exiled him. So, he left uh, his homeland and has travelled Westeros adventuring and all that sort of good stuff. And uh, learning more about land and educating children as he goes along. And then he reached Dorne where he met his wife, who was much more uh, kind of skillful with the blade and she, she was much more the uh, warrior type than he was. And then they hit it off, and they have eventually ended up in Harlow Hill. So, talking about Harlow Hill, we are a republic, and we've got some things we need to do as a republic. Now, I know that we're greedy, and that we're temperate, but I think that given that we are a republic, and we do have the business focus, I think we should make some trade posts. Now, apparently trade posts, uh, I don't know, where, uh, you'll find the limit here for other people, but yeah, they're based on how many sons you have. Um, I'm not entirely sure how we would work out our trade post limit, but um, I'm going to assume it's four because everybody else's is four. Um, I mean, we could just hover over it. Adult family members in court. Uh, oh, each one just adds one. Oh, so that makes it easy. And then capital would add a certain amount as well. Okay. Um... We'll work that, we'll work it out in time. Maybe if we go and try and build, let's try and build a trade post in Harlot. Now apparently trade posts increase the income of coastal cities around it as well as giving you money themselves. So, um, let's see if we want to build a trade post. Oh, I'll just be finished on that time. Um, it doesn't say much else about, oh wait, there we go. It's not over trade post limit. Zero out of four, because we have no adult family members in court. Okay. I understand, and our capital gives us no benefit, and because, and we don't have a house that gives us any benefit. I understand. So, we will build a trade post. I think we're going to build four of them. So, we have this trade post here, which presumably covers this area. Is there anywhere else we want to build a trade post? Ah, some trade posts have already been built, I see. Astapor has actually been busy. They built a whole bunch over here. Um, is there a trade post up north, maybe? No trade post up north. We could make one in Bear Island. Oh my, that's going to cost a lot of money. Um, that's going to cost a significant amount of money. I assume they've... Oh, there's none... In there's no trade post in High Garden, although there could be. Okay. Let's build a trade post in High Garden. It costs us a lot of money, but this is, in the end, going to make us more money. Uh, I have no idea where good trade posts should be. So I'm just going on logic, like High Garden, you would assume would be a good trade post location. Now we can't build them, yeah, we can't build them on non-coastal provinces, yeah. Um, can't build any over there. Um, we could build a trade post in Lannisport, that kind of makes sense. I don't know if it's necessarily good, but it makes sense, because it's Lannisport, it's our port on the mainland. Um... Do you want to build one somewhere like, um, Castle Rock already has one. Okay. Um, I wonder where they want to go north. Again. There's somewhere that 
I assume that the richer the province, the better the trade post. Although a lot of these places can't have trade posts for some... Why can't this not have a trade post? Oh, we don't have the money for the trade post. I see. Yeah, okay. We'll leave it at three then. That's fine. And let's unpause and see how it goes. I really have no idea what trade posts... Uh, like, I have no idea how much they're going to bring in in terms of their amount of money, but that's fine. Okay, so you... Uh, why do we register in prison you? You're a tyrant. Okay. Um... Apart from that, no real other reason as far as I can see. Uh, do we have a... Does he have prisoners of ours? Oh, yes. Arwen Farwind. Um, we could always do the um, plot to release prisoner and rescue from prison. And then I believe we get an event after that. But we're not going to do that. Because uh, we don't care enough about her. And then you want to replace Master Dale's Master of Coin. Okay, don't need to worry. And our favor is with Gisela. Right. Cool. And we'll just kind of chill out with our uh, new stuff. Wait wait for all of our trade posts to be built. How long are they going to take? Ah, not that long. It'll uh, be a year. Yeah, that's not too much problems. Uh, winter is coming, which is... Uh, yeah, let's kind of uh, take it or leave it as well. Oh, we lost our favor. I assume that was the gazella we had a favor with. No, it's a different gazella. This gazella was married to Nun Alvarez. All right, yes. I'd forgotten about him. He has the uh, dragon and he is currently um, Hand of the King of the Iron Isles. Now, not us. We're Lord Magister of the Iron Isles. The Iron King Lancel Lannister. Obviously. Uh, Margaret Benson died a natural death. She was married to Timur uh, Drum and she had two children who are Hotho Serpentail and Melora Serpentail. We still in the War of this Rock? Uh, the Westerosi does your war over the rock. Oh yeah, we're still in that. Oh, that would make Westeros really, really large if that goes through. Hmm. Wonder if we want to actively participate at all. Probably not. My Master of Laws, uh, Master Urus, kindly suggests that it would be of benefit to the realm if I studied the languages spoken at foreign courts. He offers himself to aid me in my studies. Um, okay. Well, it doesn't cost us any money. So that definitely adds a po positive. I mean, we're a little bit cynical. Um, but that's more religiously. Um, our f mother was from a different religion. So, yeah. I think that seems like an excellent idea. It's uh, learning more about uh, other places. Uh, some things are going... Some uh, favors are being called in over there. Travelers bring rumors of fire and blood. They say that dragons live once more and that Varian Magar now rides Jahegagron into battle. Jahegagron? Okay, that's fine. Uh, so this is Varian Magar, who doesn't appear to be very important overall. But he is a dragon rider, which makes him naturally important. Okay. Are there any laws we want to change now that we're... Uh like, now that we're a public, we can't really change very much. Hmm. Oh well, that's fine. Uh, wait, what was one of, one of those laws actually did catch my diplomacy? We have to, council members vote on our diplomatic actions. We could change that, although pretty much everybody opposes it, so. Hmm. Uh, Tarl has been a leal and able servant, having successfully completed many tasks in the aid of the Iron Islands. He's seen as the right and honorable course to reward him with certain incomes and grants as to foster greater loyalty. Um, now, uh, he is our drowned man. Let's say we owe him a favor. Because we're not going to give away money. Age 60, Garwin Sawyer died a natural death. He was married to Alanis Kidwell and they had two sons. I don't know why we got a pop-up about him. I can't really remember. I don't think he was a custom courtier. Uh, I could be completely wrong about that though. Stefar is impulsive and seems unable to tell right from wrong. What should I do with my wayward kinsman? Um, I don't know. We should... Hmm. Strap or pat him on the head? Have a look at ourselves. We're honorable. So I guess it's the strap for him. Yeah. My kinsman, Hotho Serpentails, expressed his desire to get married and asked for permission to find a suitable spouse. Um, marry as you please. He has chosen to marry Margot. All right, content and chase. Interesting choice. 
To the glorious Lord Magister Vicon, blessings upon you and your house. We've decided to offer you the position of commander. Do you accept? I mean, I suppose we would. We are actually a reasonably good commander and we're honourable. There's nothing really, really stopping us from being a commander. I'll, I'll accept. I'll be commander of our liege's armies. Looks like he's about to win his war as well. The Lords of the Iron Isles have approved the institution of the Free Inheritance Law. Now, I don't believe this applies to us because our inheritance is patrician. Uh, wait. Oh, Free Inheritance means it can go outside the realm, right? Uh, Free Inheritance Law. I misread what that was. Um, where is it? Oh, there we go. Controlled Realm Inheritance. Free. Uh, vassal titles do not have any special regulations on inheritance outside the realm and it was currently illegal. Okay, that's fine. Uh, probably not the best for the realm as a whole, but it probably gets in some opinion. A son was born to Davin Storm and Brella named Theo. So Davin, Stor uh, Davin Seaworth Storm and Brella. And then we got Theo Seaworth. There we go. Nothing special about him. Stefar asks, since we all die anyway, why be, why to be so hassled about life? Why to be so hassled? Um, well, I could say I am supposed you're right, or what about the enjoyment? Um, I suppose we'd say I suppose you're right, because we're a bit temperate. Zephyr seems to always be moderate, never does anything to excess. He's gained a temperate trait. Okay. Who's he betrothed to? Ronda Ironfoot. Oh, okay. Travelers bring rumors of fire and blood. They say that dragons live once more and that Megan Selsagar now rides... Tariel into battle. Okay, there we go. Oh, she was previously married to Lord Adrian of the Rose Road and is the mother of Lady Tanda of the Rose Road. Now that's interesting because that's a dragon in Westeros. Another one. No, not Westeros, the Reach, because obviously Westeros doesn't actually exist as a concept right now. But anyway, you get the idea. A daughter was born to Fenhal Gary and Wyla Forrester named Selax. The quoi? That's my best guess of it. There you go. It's in larger tank so you can read it. She's sickly, so maybe we won't have to pronounce the name for much longer. Oh, we were in command for a second. Uh, at age 68, Conda died in the dungeons of Corsair Zando of the Wester Western Isles. Okay. Oh, Melissa's uh, father. Okay. And so Lannister bought a favor. Okay, wonder what he's using that for. No one else. Oh, there is somebody else we can rent, uh, rightfully imprison. We've got Torgrim Snow is trying to kill Melinda Mavery. Now, I've heard that name before, so I'm just going to quickly check. Melinda Mavery is our Master of Whisperers. Oh, okay. Um, I suppose I don't mind too much, because as Master of Whisperers, she should be able to avoid this sort of thing. But anyway, it's her job to bring it to us. A son was born to Damon Wilson and Princess Daisy of the Iron Isles named Dag um, Dagmir. Damon Wilson married to Daisy Lannister. And then they had their son Dagmir, who's got nothing special about him. Lord Paramount Jason of the Westlands accepted King Arston of Westeros' peace uh, offer. That, that means that Jason, uh, Jason Lannister is now directly underneath... Uh, Westeros in just a couple of seconds. There we go. Westeros is uh, growing massively. It rankles me that my liege, the Iron King Lancel, has the fealty of Lord Hagen Greensmith when Pike should rightfully be sworn to me. Now, we are greedy. Um, so, I think we would definitely go for this. So, we can either seek an audience with the Iron King Lancel, or I doubt he would agree, or I do not want this vast at least for a few years. We'll, we'll, we'll seek an audience. My liege, Iron King Lance of the Iron Isles, has denied my request to make my rightful vassal mine. Well, there are other ways. Hmm. Yes, I don't know if we're going to go into any of those, though. I wonder what Westeros is going to do next. Oh, we built a trade post. Um, the family... A trade post being built by the Serpentail family of the Iron Islands in Harlow Hill. There we go. Very nice. So this provides us with a set amount of income. And uh, does it also cover a zone? Like, uh, not quite. Like, is there like trade zone? Something like that. 
Just looking at the map modes here, see if we can find the right one. Oh, uh, there it is, trade zones. Ah, no, this is still all controlled by Astpor. I get it. That's fine, at least we have a trade post. We should be getting some more soon. Oh, we also have some weak claims we could press. We could press... Wow. Many claims on Westeros and Dragonstone. Yep. And then some Dejur claims if we wanted to. Uh, not going to do that. We could press some claims on Pike for many of our uh, people, but he is an ally. And then it's back to uh, Westeros for some more claims. Yeah, we're not going to press any of those just now. That's fine. King Arson of Westeros revoked the Lordship of Darry from Lord John the Wicked of Duskendale. So the Darklands no longer hold uh, Darry. Okay. How's our trade post down here going? Oh, it's almost built. Cool. The wall is under assault. The Night's Watch is hard pressed to defend it. They have called upon all Lords of the Realms to take up arms and defend in defending them against the dangers from beyond the wall. Oh, they're being attacked by the uh, king beyond the wall. Uh, king Harmond Bridge Tamer. And Crow Killer. Well, um, no. They can handle a few snarks and grumpkins. We're, we're, uh, we're very stingy, and that would probably cost money. Your master of coin comes to see you one afternoon. He explains that he's devised a plan to bring in exotic goods by setting up a trade route with a foreign realm. This would, of course, re require a sizable monetary investment, but the profits would also be great. Hmm. Well, I mean, if the profits would be great, I think that's that's an opportunity. Let's organize an expedition. Time has come to outfit a ship for a trading expedition. The harbor master shows you a large ship with a sizable cargo hold that would be perfect for the job, but also comes at, at quite a hefty price. Um... Well, we'll try our crew of bandits to steal it, because uh, we don't want to pay for it. Although we are honorable, so would we just pay the price for it? This question, is our greed or our honorable going to win out here? Um, hmm. You know what? We'll, we'll be honorable this time. We'll buy the merchant uh, ship for the journey. There's also, I don't think hiring a lot of bandits seems like a very sensible idea. The word has spread that you're planning a trading expedition, and a group of drowned man's men have arrived at your court with a request. They are offering temple funds for the journey if you will allow them to come along on the journey. Well, I mean, of course we'll have them, because they are offering us money. Even though I know that that's not a good idea. It's time to set out on a trading expedition. Hopefully it will yield good profits. Okay, let's see where we're going. Oh, we have built our trading post in High Garden. Now, if we check it out, yeah, we actually control a little. We control the world's smallest trade zone. Uh, down here. Look at that. Oh, you can't even see it. It's that small. Oh well, we get some money from High Garden, which isn't too bad. And that means that our family trade post is making, like, as a family, our trade posts are making quite a lot. Because we also built one in Lannisport, which is good, and it's making us some money as well. Cool. Well, um, we should maybe make one a little bit... I guess if we're wanting trade zones, then maybe we should make some more in the same area, and that would then allow us to get more money. I don't understand entirely how it works, but that'd be my guess, is if we make more, that we can make more money just kind of generally along the way. Um, I don't know. Uh... Do you want to maybe make some along here, like Crack Hall or something? Maybe somewhere that isn't completely raided. Some like Old Oak, somewhere between Lannisport and High Garden, or maybe Grey Shield out on the edge. Hmm. I don't know. How about Old Oak? We'll go with that. I don't know entirely how trade posts work. I'm really stabbing in the dark, but I assume that's how it works. Your expedition finally reaches the realm of Prince. Um, Punyo Haro, Zach, uh, that'd be Puna, uh, Pun Ox Haro, Zax. Okay, there we are. Uh, your master of coin asks you what gift we should bring forth as a token of friendship. A dozen tough warriors, a chest with quality cloth from black, uh, from back home, a pouch of rare herbs, or my courtesy should be enough of a gift. We'll, we'll bring the smallest gift we can. 
At dinner, you notice uh, the prince, his face growing red with annoyance, he glares at your steward shoveling, shoveling his food in with his bare hands. Lord Master Dale of Lansport is paying his regards to the blessing of the something something blah 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 uh, dot dot dot. Let's see if that works. Maybe. You are walking idly around the court of the prince when you suddenly hear a discussion increasing in intensity around the corner. Turning around the corner, you are surprised to see one of your drowned men from your expedition engaging in a wild theological debate with, with a local noble. This could endanger the whole venture. Well, this has to stop. Definitely. We are cynical, so we're not going to let it continue. As you spend m uh, time more and more discussing with the prince, you realise you have a lot more in common than mere business. I've gained a friend. Good. Tarl is no longer um, our um, drowned man. Okay, we need a new one. I guess it's going to be Regnar. And he can um, perform charity, probably. Although, we don't, we don't really want to do that either. Now, we don't want to perform charity because we're greedy. We don't want to convert because we're cynical. We don't want to build zeal because we're cynical. I guess we just don't give him a job. Okay. That's fine. With the new trade route set up, you return with the first batch of goods and sell them off for a nice profit. The influx of new warriors will also benefit the economy for a long period to come. So, we get a ton of gold and prestige. We get a trade route, which gives a city tax, castle tax, and tribal tax in Harlow Hill. It also gives us the trader bonus, which gets us two stewardship. And it means that all of our city vassals like us a little bit more. Perfect. Fantastic. Well, we will keep going for just for a little bit. Your master of coin has brought in riches to your realm through his competent handing of the handling of the trading expedition, and he uh, probably expects to be rewarded with his share of the wealth. Uh, no, no, we're, we're going to keep that money. And a son was born to Duncan Snowfall and Morgan Santagar named Alfin. Okay. Well, I'm going to end the episode here. Thank you for watching, and I will see you next time. Goodbye.